Well, good morning, Beaver Dam, and Happy New Year. Welcome to 2023. My name is Owen Taylor, and I have the pleasure of being the pastor here at Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel. And I'm glad that you're joining us for our time of reflections. This is a time where we gather Monday through Thursday to read some scripture together, to uh, to hear some reflections of John Wesley on the particular text for the day by looking at some of his sermons, and then uh, hearing some random thoughts on mine on the particular topic of the day. So I hope that everybody has had a good Christmas season and a happy new year. And uh, I guess it's time to get back into the swing of things, isn't it? So uh, we're starting off today uh, with a couple of scripture readings. One is a psalm, since we've been working our way through the psalms. And this morning we're at Psalm 116. And then we have some, uh, some texts from the Gospel of Mark. So uh, let's delve into the text, shall we? Our first reading this morning comes from Psalm 16. And uh, we'll be reading the entire psalm. And this is a psalm of David's. And uh, I'm reading from the Common English Bible this morning. Protect me, God, because I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have nothing good. Now, as far as the holy ones in the land, the magnificent ones that I was so happy about, let their suffering increase because they hurried after a different God. I won't participate in their blood offerings. I won't let their names cross my lips. You, Lord, are my portion, my cup. You control my destiny. The property lines have fallen beautifully for me. Yes, I have a lovely home. I will bless the Lord who advises me even at night, I am instructed in the depths of my mind. I will, I always put the Lord in front of me. I will not stumble because he is on my right side. That's why my heart celebrates and my j mood is joyous. Yes, my whole body will rest in safety because you won't abandon my life to the grave. You won't let your faithful followers see the pit. You teach me the way of life. In your presence is total celebration. Beautiful things are always in your right hand. Some pretty good words this morning from, from the psalmist. So uh, our next reading this morning comes from uh, the Gospel of Mark. This is chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. One of the legal experts heard their dispute and saw how well Jesus answered them. He came over and asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus replied, the most important one is Israel. Listen, our God is the one Lord. You must love the Lord, our God, your God, with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you will love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. The legal expert said to him, well said teacher, you have truthfully said that God is one and there is no other besides him. And to love God with all your heart, a full understanding and of, and of one's strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more important than all kinds of entirely burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered with wisdom, he said to him, You aren't far from God's kingdom. After that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. So there we go. Well, good morning, Martha. Glad to see you're joining us. Some pretty good texts from, uh, from the Gospel of Mark. Well, this morning we're going to be focusing on verse 31, and uh, we're going to go, uh, we're going to try our Lectio Divina, where we will read the text, uh, that particular verse, in several different translations, and listen for how these translations are similar and different, 
and see if God is speaking to you in a, in a different way through the translations. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. morning. Let us pray. From the Common English Translation, the second is this, you will love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. from the King James Version. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. From the New Revised Standard Version. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. From the New Living Translation, the NLT. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. Amen, amen, amen. Not a whole lot of differences in those translations this morning, is there? Oh, shit. Sorry about that. My foot kicked the, the shredder this morning. So uh, we've been using uh, Renew My Heart. It's a, uh, it's a daily devotion based on John Wesley's sermons. And the one uh, entitled this morning is uh, the two great commandments. And it, the focus verse is uh, that 12, 30, and 31. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Loving the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength is the first great branch of Christian righteousness. You shall delight yourself in the Lord your God, seeking and finding all happiness in him. You shall hear and fulfill his word. My son, give me your heart, and having given him your innermost soul to reign there without re revival, you may cry, well cry out in the fullness of your heart. I will love you, O my Lord, my strength this the lord is my strong rock my savior my god in whom i trust the second commandment the second great branch of christian righteousness is closely and inseparably connected with the first love your neighbor as yourself love embrace with the most tender goodwill the most earnest and cordial affection, 
the most inflamed desires of preventing or removing all evil and bringing every possible good. Your neighbor, not only your friends, kinfolks, or acquaintances, not only the virtuous ones who regard you, who extend or return your kindness, but every person, not excluding those who have you have never seen or know by name, not excluding those you know to be evil and unthankful, those who d despitefully use you, even those you shall love as yourself with the same invariable thirst after their happiness. Use the same wearied care to screen them from whatever might grieve or hurt either their soul or body. This is love. Well, there's uh, some pretty good, pretty good words from, from Wesley this morning. And you know, I think uh, I think he's right. I think it is easier for us to love those who appreciate us, who that we can, uh, who we have a, a, a relationship with, uh, whatever that relationship happens to be. But I don't think that's what Jesus was getting at in today's text. That we need to really look at expanding our definition of who our neighbor is. I really like the way Wesley put it. Uh, how did he put it? He phrased it in a sense. Um, let's see. Um, but every person, not excluding those you've never seen or known by name, not excluding those you know to be evil and unthankful, who despitefully use you, that is really showing true love when we're able to love folks like that, when we're able to love the people that we've never met, that we've never never known their name, and truly love them for who they are. You know, I found it interesting um, this morning on my Facebook feed, a post in the Beaver Dam Residence page popped up about uh, a homeless person uh, walking around in Beaver Dam and, um, and walking through some people's property. And I found it interesting because the comments on that, uh, on that feed were mostly uh, concerning their own, people's own safety, about making sure that they were locking up their, their property well and making sure that they were aware of their surroundings and notifying the police. What I found interesting was there was only one or two comments about the well-being of this particular person. You know, this person is our neighbor, even though they may be down on their luck, and even though they may be choosing the life of, uh, of being homeless, um, there wasn't a lot of love for their neighbor. And that's a, that's a little concerning because then it, it really makes us question um, where we're coming from and how we are living out our faith and how we're living at, into those, uh, those, those two great commandments that Jesus gave us. So that's something to, to really ponder on today is uh, how do we love our neighbor? And what does it mean for us to truly love all as our neighbor? Just something to think about on this uh, Monday morning which is the first, I guess, first working day of 2023. It's a little foggy this morning, but it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. So uh, let's get ready to take on the day, shall we? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for all of the blessings that you poured out upon us in 2022. And Lord, we just thank you for all of the adventures that lie ahead of us in 2023. God, we know that no matter what is coming our way, that you will be with us, that you will guide us, and that uh, you will comfort us in whatever we face. And Lord, we also know that you'll celebrate with us in those times of celebration. Lord, we just ask that you keep us all safe, keep us all well, give us those things that we need, and encourage us to reach out and to love our neighbor, all of our neighbors. 
Lord, we raise these prayers to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, friends, remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace, y'all. Bye for now.